Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile, and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where once a week I will, well actually twice a week, usually Mondays and Fridays, I will upload a video talking about things that happened recently in the league and some of the things I'm looking forward to seeing. And I say Mondays and Fridays, but oftentimes I'll record on Thursdays and Sundays if I can, just because it's good to get it out of the way. I say I still say Monday and Friday though, just because. You know, sometimes I'll be early. That's great. But I don't want to say Sunday and then not be able to do it till Monday. So we say Monday because I'd rather be early than late. So some of the player news to get to. First of all, I didn't see this until after I had already recorded and uploaded last week's. But apparently, Glory Johnson announced that she is pregnant and will be missing the entire season. And for the shock, this hurts them. It doesn't kill them. I think they're still strong enough to make the playoffs. But she has been such a consistent presence in the post for them. You know, she's one of the best forwards in the league right now. And they're, they're going to miss her presence. She's a smart veteran, very reliable player on both ends of the court. And it's this is going this is going to affect them long term. But I still think they're good enough that they'll be in that playoff fight. Also, in case you're wondering, I have no comment yet on the whole you know, Johnson Griner situation going on. Like, I'm trying to keep up with the news and everything that's happening. I mean, this all just seems crazy, but like, me, hey, I've been single my whole life. 25 years old, never been on a date. I, I'm so, I'm just really happy right now that I've never had to deal with that bullshit. So, I have no idea what goes on in their minds when all this stuff is going down and how it ended up like this. Uh, that, so, all I'm going to say is, you know, it sucks that people are going through this. You know, it, I, I feel bad for you. I got 99 problems, but uh, you know what, we're just going to move on. Okay, a couple of other notable players that I want to talk about. Elena Della Don, she started out the season amazingly. Opening night, she drops 31 points and then followed that up the very next night with 40 points. So far through the first two games of the season, she has 71 points, 17 rebounds, and 7 blocks. And she's looking like an easy front runner for the MVP right now. Also notable, Rebecca Brunson, she's had double doubles in both of her opening games. So she's got a total of 30 points and 28 rebounds right now now through two games and it may not seem like a lot but she's the only player who can say that right now in this season she's had a double double in every single game that's still something worth mentioning Rebecca Brunson is one of the is an elite player and I feel like she doesn't get talked about as much as she should uh, currently the Washington Mystics are the only undefeated team left in the Eastern Conference sitting at 2-0 and and while in the Western Conference, you've got three teams left undefeated with the, uh, uh, with the Minnesota Lynx sitting at the very top of the conference, as we expected. Who here is actually shocked? And so we'll move on to a couple of games that I'm looking forward to this week. First of all, on Tuesday, you've got Indiana at New York at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Fever have surprisingly started this season in the basement and are currently looking for their first one of the season. Uh, do they have what it takes? Uh, to take on Tina Charles and Kia Stokes because it seems like New York going with that Twin Towers attack. It seems pretty effective, somewhat. You've also got Seattle at Tulsa. Both of these teams have some exciting young guards, so it should be fun to watch out for. You know, with the Storm, with all the changes they made in the offseason, a lot of people are being very dismissive of them, but they surprised a few people with that first win of the season. I think they've got plenty of surprises left this season, and a lot of people... And then... Yeah, we've also got, moving on to Thursday, Chicago at Connecticut at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After the first two games, I cannot wait to see more Elena Della Don. Like, I'm just going to watch every Chicago game from now on. Just because, wow. Then you've also got Phoenix at New York. As, and Phoenix, they were able to rely on defense to win game one. Can they contain Tina Charles and the rest of the Liberty squad? Maybe. I mean, it's not like they're scoring 100 points a game, are they? So... You've also got San Antonio at Atlanta. Both of these teams still looking for their first one of the season. And you've also got Seattle at Minnesota. S Seattle has got a rough week. They're being tested. and they, But they still also have a good opportunity to show people that opening night was not a fluke. So, you know, that, that's something to look forward to. So as all, I forgot to say this already, but you should know by now if you're new, new to, used to this, you know, check your local listings, see what, see where you can catch these games, and if not, you can catch every single game on WNBA Live Access. And so the next episode of this will be Friday morning. And so this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Lyle. Have a good week.